It's been a while since Native Instruments had a machine software update we're talking about. The last one being the introduction of Polysynth mid-2021. With that said, their latest update 2.15 does have some great features, so let's check them out. Opening up Native Access and heading to the Changes tab for Machine, we can see what's been added, fixed, and removed for 2.15. I won't cover what was fixed or removed as those are pretty minor in my opinion. Instead, I'll cover what was added. Next, we have auto project recovery, which in my opinion should have been a thing a long time ago, but I'm happy we have it now. After downloading the update, the feature should automatically be active, but you can find it under the preferences page in the general tab as automatic backup. This is great for when machine crashes or quits unexpectedly, as the next time you launch machine, a dialog box will prompt you to either restore the project or not. The next two additions, Auto Sampler and Save Sound with Samples go hand in hand. I will be making a separate video on how to get the most out of the Auto Sampler, but for now, here's a quick little overview. The Auto Sampler is great for those who are running large projects with CPU intensive plugins. Those Machine Plus users who use third-party plugins on their computer and want to transfer those projects to the Plus, and machine users who want to create machine instruments from hardware synths. Using the auto sample feature internally is really easy. So for example, I have an instance of Massive X on Pad 1, where I'll be sampling it onto Pad 2. So select Pad 2, go to your sample editor, and on page 1 select Auto for your mode. The sample parameter refers to how long machine is going to record for. So if you want a short percussive sound, set a short sample time, and if you want a long pad, set a longer sample time. Note on refers to the length the auto sampler triggers the instrument is recording. Page two is where you set your input source. So since we're gonna sample internally, we'll set the source to internal and the input to A1, S1, AKA group one, sound one. The next few pages I'll cover deeper in another video, but that's where you'll find options for note mapping, velocity mapping, and batch processing. For now, I'm gonna hit the start button and we'll see what it does and its results. So machine triggered and recorded C3 from the massive X patch at a velocity of 100 and stretch it across the keyboard. So that's pad one where massive X is. And pad two, the newly sampled instrument. And I said the addition of the save sound with sample goes hand in hand with the auto sampler. So to do so, you're gonna right click your sound, select save sound with sample, click the path text to give your instrument a name, as well as decide where you're going to save it to. Hit save and save again. Now when I go to the folder it was saved in, you'll see the instrument and its accompanying sample. To quickly show you guys how to sample a hardware synth, I have the MicroFreak connected directly to the machine. I have a regular quarter inch cable going from the output of the MicroFreak to line in one of the machine. So that's how to record the audio sample. Next, in order to have machine and the microfreak speak to each other, I have the MIDI in of the microfreak connected to the MIDI out of the machine and the MIDI out of the microfreak to the MIDI in of the machine. This allows machine to trigger the notes in the microfreak so it can be sampled. Now with all the connections set, I'm gonna go to an empty pad on the machine and select auto. And for example's sake, I'm gonna leave all the record parameters at its default state. Moving to page two, I'm gonna select external mono since I only have one audio cable connected from the microfreak to the machine. For MIDI two, I'm gonna select the microfreak. Notice how the start button on the top is now active. But when I hit the microfreak, you see a signal but can't hear it just yet. So I'm gonna go to page six and turn the monitor on. And for now, that's all I wanna do. So I'm gonna hit start and let machine do its thing. So again, machine recorded the note C3 off the microfreak at a velocity of 100 and spread it across the keyboard. And if you're asking why the waveform looks so small, it's just because the output of the microfreak is so low. But you do have the options for the auto sampler to normalize the waveform after it records. I'll definitely go deeper on the different parameters and what you can do with the auto sampler in a separate video. But moving on to the final topic, chord inversions. It does seem that chord inversions were excluded from this update 
based on what I see in the update notes. But if you're not familiar with what core inversions are and the theory behind them, check out this video to get caught up on them for when they go live. Peace.